I am back from Australia, and man, was that an adventure. So it's 9 p.m. in Vancouver right now. We've already been in the air for five hours, Toronto to Vancouver. We board at 11 p.m. for Brisbane and then we'll be in the air for 14 hours. Longest flight of my life, so we'll see how that goes. Our trip started in Byron Bay, home of fellow YouTuber and astronomer Dylan O'Donnell. This year he hosted Star Stuff 3 in his hometown, a constellation of space, science, and astronomy. He invited Ashley and I from Canada, and it was officially the longest trip we've ever been on. Because of the time change, we were pretty out of it. Despite hearing how perfect the weather is normally for this time of year in Byron Bay, it was pretty rainy when we got there. So, I want to know if you'd be willing to zoom in and teach some high school kids how to do some snow high school. But I'm going to. Yeah. With little to no sleep and a severe case of jet lag, it was time for the main event. I was blown away with how many people knew who I was in Australia. I immediately felt guilty about how northern specific my content has been over the last eight years. After hearing talk after talk by brilliant scientists and scholars, it was time for me to get up there and talk about how I take pictures of the Orion Nebula with my DSLR from the back patio. Always blown away by Trevor's Astro Backyard channel. Uh, so please welcome Trevor Jones from Astro Backyard. Revealing the object in incredible detail. Astrophotography lets you share the experience. Throughout all of this, Dylan had been running around like a maniac, making sure that speakers were mic'd up, presentations were cued, and that the VIP dinner was still on for 7 p.m. Speaking of dinner, he threw a curveball at me a week before the event, a hot one style challenge where he interviews me in front of the audience while eating increasingly hotter wings. At this point, I was borderline delirious between the jet lag and the excitement of the event. I hope I didn't say anything embarrassing. Ooh. It's in my gums? Yeah. <laughs> the home evolution. Okay, so this is nine, right? No, this is eight. <laughs> After surviving the challenge, Star Stuff 3 was officially over, and Ashley and I were able to just hang out with Dylan and spend some time with him. What's the game plan? Uh, meeting up with Dylan. We got a little... Little care package. Little care package for him. Some Canadian Ontario wine. Yeah, wait, get to the good stuff. What, the KD? The ketchup <laughs> chips, which I think are pretty crushed. This is a delicacy in Canada. Okay. He's trying to get in. Should I let him in? It's a turkey, right? I don't know. That's a turkey. <laughs> oh, thank you. This is incredible. And wait, so... Oh, KD. Yeah, yeah, you don't have that here, right? <laughs> this is my jam. Okay. Okay. Craft dinner. I oh was insistent God. that we had that in the package. The official Canadian craft <laughs> That's dinner. That's right. Yeah. First time having Vegemite. An Australian delicacy. Delicacy. I like it. It tastes like something else. I'm trying to figure out what it is. Oh, you know what it kind of tastes like? It's Cheese Whiz. Cheese Whiz? <laughs> cheese Whiz must be full of sodium. That's right. probably it. It's just yeah. like a salty spread on toast.
While the social part of this trip was a lot of fun, I still hadn't taken a single picture of the Southern Hemisphere sky. At this point, I was starting to freak out a little bit thinking that I might go home empty handed. This is exactly why we booked a trip to Central Australia to see the true outback and experience the night sky like never before. We stayed in Eulera at a resort near the famous Uluru or Ayers Rock. This ancient geological wonder has some serious significance to the natives and it was absolutely spectacular to see it in person. I just want to apologize to all of you. We took so many epic time lapses and nightscapes of Uluru and I had to cut everything. It's like, it's the whole reason we went there. If you want to see how magical this place looks at night, just Google it. All those people got permits, I guess. So we just got to our hotel and it looks like we have a little spot. We can go outside of the room, right outside the door to set up and actually take some pictures late into the night. That's the plan anyway. Our neighbors don't mind. Set it to 25 degrees latitude. I was able to set up my astronomy gear right outside of our room, and this worked out really well. Because everything was battery powered and portable, I could just plunk my setup wherever I wanted it. I climbed a red sandy dune to get a better vantage point in a lower horizon, and I had to manually polar align my star tracker with the south celestial pole for the first time. Everyone told me that this would be nearly impossible to do manually, and basically that I was screwed. The last night I was set up just outside of the hotel, and it was actually a great spot for Milky Way to see the core of the Milky Way. There were some trees and stuff, but that was all good. Tonight, I need a lower horizon to get some of the targets that I've been wanting to go after. Using Stellarium on my mobile phone and some trial and error, I got my tracker pretty darn close. Because I was shooting at wider focal lengths, nothing above 200 millimeters, my polar alignment was enough for crisp shots at 60 seconds long or even more. This is the setup I used in Australia for Deep Sky. The Star Adventure 2i, an Astro-modified Canon EOS R, and the TPO version of the Ascar FMA 180. While this shoots at a rather wide focal length of 180 millimeters, without tracking and a solid polar alignment, shots like this would be impossible. So why is the Milky Way from the Southern Hemisphere, from Australia, so much better than the Milky Way at home? Well, let's have a look in Stellarium. So this is my backyard here in Southern Ontario, and we're in Milky Way season right now. Let's take a look at what the Milky Way looks like from home. So we have the familiar uh, constellations. We're looking towards the south, all the Northern constellations over here, stuff they don't have, some really cool stuff, right? But the core of the Milky Way, the galactic center, is a really exciting part of the night sky. You could say it's the most exciting. So for me, here at home in the north, it's always to the south and it's always running into the horizon. So objects like the lagoon and Trifid and targets in Sagittarius, the teapot right here, are always kind of skirting the trees and some of the absolute best deep sky objects lie down there. So we can get them, but let's compare that now to those Australian skies to see how not fair it is. So we'll go into location and I'll change it to Sydney. Here we go, different time of day. As if my backyard was in Sydney, let's look at the sky. Look at that Milky Way core rising straight up into the sky, really high up, better transparency. All of those objects that were running into the ground from home are now way up overhead. The lagoon is sky high. Not to mention, everything's kind of flipped now. So if we look into uh, the southwest here, at, at least at this time of night, you can see all of these new objects. There's Carina in there, all these new constellations that we just don't get in the Northern Hemisphere. So there's some amazing 
deep sky targets in there as well. So this whole section of the sky is just brand new to anyone that's used to the northern sky. So yeah, I think they got us beat. We ran two rigs, two Star Adventures, two Canon EOS Rs. We were definitely maxed out on gear and everything here except the tripods fit into our personal item bags on the plane. For some wider shots, I took some pictures of the core of the Milky Way using this Sigma 24 millimeter F 1.4 lens. As excited as I was to catch Karina, this is the shot I really wanted to get. It was incredible to see the galactic center not running into the horizon, but straight up overhead in its entirety. I'll never forget what it felt like to see that. Now we have some incredible Northern constellations and deep sky objects at home, but the Southern Milky Way is hands down the most incredible sky you will ever see.